Hello everyone, myself Indra Sadakat and I have been associated with my Aussie tutor and academic writing since the past one and a half years and the topic that I am discussing today is therapeutic communication. I have a bachelor's in dentistry and a master's in public health. When we look at therapeutic communication and the nursing concept, we basically are discussing the communication that the patient uh, has with the nurse and the nurse, nursing individual has with the patients and also the communication that is more important is the one that they happen that happens between the healthcare workers and the nurses and when the shift changes and the therapeutic communication that happens in the, within the team so as to provide the best possible care to the individuals. So basically the most important aspect of health treatment when you look at it is communication. It basically helps in nurses in assisting and developing positive clinical relationship with the patients and also provide tailored care to the patients. And also the nurses who invest their time to learn about their patients, the challenges they are facing and the issues that they have, it will be able to, be able to be more prepared to provide services to them. So nursing documentation when you look at it is basically according to the nursing code of standard is a person's standard action and good practice. Documentation is absolutely important to a certain the extent of illness. The scope of the assistance that is supposed to be given to the patient and the quality of the treatment that is offered. And all of these should be then be able to evaluate it easily so that the payment and reimbursement for healthcare services can be done appropriately. Documenting records basically is used to reduce the patient rates and treatment outcomes and accurate and effective monitoring should also be all documented clinically so as to be able Able to transfer when you are able transferring care of the patient from one person to the other person and also maintaining records for the patient or for the individual for his or own own record for further checkup in the future and to maintain quality of healthcare services and effective monitoring of the appropriate condition of the patient that happened and how it was monitored and how effectively it was treated all of this needs proper documentation it will also help in saving costs also and avoid duplication and errors and billing and handover as well so clinical documentation and nursing handover is the major component of nursing documentation and this handover methodology a method known as isbar format is used to help correctly present data and collect the data of the patient and present it forward to the next person for a complete clinical view of the patient so the significance of clinical handover is basically that since sensitive information is being operated or worked upon and is supposed to be exchanged appropriately, there should be a proper structure that should be followed while doing this. So that coordination failures within and between the health service organization, within the healthcare team of doctors and nurses that are working to treat the patient, that is also reduced and all of them know what is happening because everything is documented and when they were not around what had been done previously and what is supposed to be done as the next step. So therefore, it helps in increasing the patient's safety and providing appropriate treatment. Basically, it is critical during shift changes and when communication mistakes are more common, information is more likely to be misinterpreted or misplaced. Therefore, ineffective clinical handover is often linked to clinician wasting a lot of time trying to find out what are the accurate and the right effects facts and then what is the further course of action that I can take. So if not known, then it can lead to ineffective treatment. You can give a drug, you can increase the dose of morphine supposedly. When it was previously given, you do not know how much was it given and can cause respiratory failure in the patient and probable death and can also use inefficient use of services and abuse of the patient as well. So basically, ISBAR is basically identifying the patient, situation of the patient, what is currently the patient undergoing, what is the oncology background of the patient, the history of the presenting illness, the assessment, what you have assessed, what situation is currently and what are the recommendations that needs to be followed or done for the patient in terms of the examination and uh, the further treatment of the patient. So that is the recommendation that you give the diagnosis, the further investigation that need to be carried out or any painkillers that need to be given or anything that needs to be managed. So moving on, ISBAR is basically a paradigm, standardized communication method that I discussed with the following headings and it guarantees that there is complete data that is being provided and there is no missing data and there is absolute targeting of the established priorities that will be conveyed forward in terms of in focusing on the issue of the patient and communicating the condition of the patient effectively as well. So this needs to basically implement and promote it as a formal, formal clinical handover procedure. So can we implement and So basically there is a need to implement this formal clinical handover procedure in the organization so that the organizations are mandated to do the same and clinical coordination systems are in place absolutely at all stages during treatment transitions. This is also in purview with the NSQHS safety standard 6.4b. Therefore, shift changes, patient transferring within the hospital or from the hospital to another hospital within the hospital units or services, registration of the patient at the counter, their referrals or discharges are all examples of these transitions of prayer which all require documentation so that everything is in coordination and there is no confusion regarding 
regarding the treatment and the methodology of treatment that is being adopted for the patient and the patient history as well. Therefore, it improves efficient patient and clinician engagement and also improves patient involvement in the process of treatment as well. And that is in tandem with the 6.4a and 6.4c standard of the NSQHS standards. So basically, patient and clinician engagement in the handover is also important where the patient's family caregivers are also important players in the transferring contact. They are also known to know the patient's needs and preferences and they are helping in doing so. Therefore, the ISBAR format helps in doing that as well and noting that as well. Therefore, it increases patient participation and coordination in their own treatment and improves the patient care results and transfers as well. And also decreases readmissions to hospitals for adverse effects of uh, that they might have experienced during care, which will be prevented because of appropriate documentation. So patients may also gain valuable insight into what they are undergoing and what is their situation and continue the treatment and needs other, at other places as well easily. So that's it for today. I hope you understood the entire concept of ISBAR and proper efficient clinical documentation and how clinical efficient documentation is necessary in the nursing individual and healthcare professionals within the team, within the hospital and within the hospitals as well. So as to provide efficient care to the patients and prevent any misplaced or miscommunication during transfers of the patients. Thank you.